So let's let's begin. Use the information. Uh, uh, please, please. A minute, uh, please. Uh, we know the drill. Uh, you have to stay muted. If you have a question, you can raise up your hand or enter the chat room and then uh, post whatever questions that you want. There, just to minimize the amount. All right, thank you. Yes, you can. Okay. Use the information below to answer questions one to six. Right. Note, state only the value without any unit. For example, if the answer is six, just type six. The following equations refer to a classical model. One, y is equal to 96 plus n. Please, should I continue? Or I, okay, let me I, take you from here. Let me take you. All right, thank you. So you come back in when we, we, we start with the individual question. So, uh, uh this is, these are the equations that we have. We've been given the production function, okay? That's, uh, please, please, can you stay muted? Uh, why, what time did you guys join? Because out of the 40 minutes, we are left with just 10 minutes. I will not see it account. Uh, Makafu, can you mute yourself? Michael. Atta, can you mute yourself? Mm. Michael Atta. Right, so uh, the meeting will go off soon. I think some people joined too early. It's been like 30 minutes since they, they joined. And the thing starts reading, okay? So we have to do just like 10 minutes, then we just have to reconnect. So these are the equations in the model. We've been given the production function. I learned uh, you should expect some computations. Though it's multiple choice, you will still be doing some math. And for the macro, the mass is uh, the labor market mass and then the ISLM. So for this one, I just got this labor uh, market question for the IS. LM, you can just refer to the, the, the video that we did on your, your second macro test, uh, the, the uh, practice questions that you were given. Just go through that one. You should be okay for the ISLM algebra. Okay, so this one has been a while, so we just have to go through this. We will look at the other uh, multiple choice questions. Right, so we have been given the production function, and then this is the labor demand function. Remember, it's a negative function of real wage. Then the labor supply function, and then at equilibrium, when the labor market is in equilibrium, labor demand should be equal to labor supply. Okay, we've been given the equation of exchange, MD equals KPY, and then investment is here, savings is here, and then in the loanable funds market, investment should be equal to savings, okay? Investment should be equal to savings. So we have to use this to answer the first six questions, okay? So the, the first one is, what is the equilibrium value of N? So if you want to find the equilibrium value of N, you just equate ND to NX, okay? I, I'm sure there's something we cannot do. So equate uh, 26 minus two W over P to two plus two W over P. So we cannot do this. You get a linear equation in terms of the real wage. Then you solve for the real, real wage. 26 minus two W over P equals two plus two W over P. When you group the like terms, you get four W over P equals 24. Okay, so you are getting your end to be. Uh, first, first you get your W over P. Uh, I think that question was rather supposed to come first. The real wage will be given as six, okay? You get a real wage, wage of six. That's 24 divided by four. Then the second question, uh, the, the first one that we were supposed to find the end, after finding your real wage, you go to either the demand for labor function or the labor supply function, then you insert your real wage. So taking the NS, W over P is six. So if you put six here, we are getting two by six, which is 12. And then if we add 12 to two, we are getting 14. So N is equal to 14. Okay, that's N equals 14. The next question, we have to find Y, the real 
output. So after getting your end, you go to the production function. Okay, you just substitute your end. We, we've gotten end to be 14. So if you add 14 to 96, we're getting 110. So that is our, uh, our, our Y. Then for uh, the next one is to find P, the general price level. Okay, the general price level. We use the uh, equation of S change, okay, or the aggregate demand equation. So uh, MD equals KPY, and money the demand should be equal to money supply. So 44 should be equal to KPY. We've been giving K as one third. So you just substitute your one third here. Now we have Y as 110. So now we have a linear equation in terms of P. Okay, so you just have to solve for a P. You just have to solve for P. Okay, so uh, let's let's quickly do that. We have 44 equals one third uh, times 110. P, okay, so this by this, okay, 44 by this will give us what? Uh, please, if you have a calculator, can you do that for us? The, just do the cross multiplication. One, two, one, three. Two. One, three, two. 132 should be equal to 110P, okay? So if you want your P, divide through by 110. That should give us what? Okay, 1.2. Right, so it means that the general price level is 1.2, okay, 1.2. Right, then the next question is to find the nominal wage. The nominal wage. We, we know that our real wage is W over P, and we had six, right? We had six. Yeah. So if you want your nominal wage, nom nominal wage is the real wage, which is six times the price level, okay? Oh. So we'll have six by, we had a price of 1.2, okay? So what is six by 1.2? 7.2. Very good, so the nominal wage is 7.2. Nominal wage is 7.2, okay? Then we are to find equilibrium value of R, equilibrium value of R. So we go to the loanable funds market, we equate investment to savings. Okay, so equating in investment to savings, we have eight plus R. Six. Okay, eight plus R. So we just need to solve for R. Bringing this one here, we get eight R. Oh. And we send this one here, we have 40 minus eight, which is 32, right? So 32 oh. divided by eight should be, give us what? Um, Six. Four. 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 Okay. Eight by eight is four. Yes, four. Okay. Right, so we are getting uh, real inflation. Okay. Let's go. So, uh, I mean, questions like awesome. this are, are supposed to be a bonus. Mm -hmm. Right. Jess, can you read this for us? Okay. <clears throat> Assume the central bank increases the money supply to 66, and if the remainder of the structural equations listed above remain the same. Okay, so so mm -hmm. thank you. Eh? Now, uh, there's an expansionary monetary policy. And just know that in this system, uh, money has no real effect. So mm -hmm. if it's multiple choice, don't even waste your time on W over P, on N, and then the small Y. There'll be no changes at all. Okay, N won't change because it's a real variable. W over P won't change. Then the real output to won't change, okay? It only affects the nominal uh, value. So N won't change, W over P won't change, Y won't change, but what about P? Now, when you come to the aggregate demand function, okay? If you come to the aggregate demand function, now money supply is 66, okay? It's no more 44 by 66, which means that we we'll have 66 equals one third uh, P times Y. There's no change in Y. So the Y is still 110. One. Uh, do this multiplication for me. 198. 198. 198. 198. 198. 110 P. Okay, 110 P. So to find your new P, we divide through by 110. So 198 over 110. 
1.8. So you see that there's an increase in the price level as we expect. There's a direct relationship between money supply and price in this system. Initially, the price was 1.2, right? Now, because of the increase in money supply, the general price level has increased from 1.2 to 1.8. Okay, which means that there's going to be a change in the in the nominal wage too. Real wage didn't change. Real wage is still six. So if you want your nominal wage, that should be six times. Now our price is 1.8. So six times 1.8. Okay, that is uh, that that should give us what. 10.8. 10.8. Okay, 10.8. So now uh, the nominal wage is 10.8. And now your price level is 1.8, right? You see that yes. when you divide the 10.8 by 1.8, I'm sure you still get your six. Which six, means that yes. there's no change six. in the real wage. The reason why there's no change in the real wage is that when price 